This is my G5 iMac and it currently has a couple of issues. In the video recently, we got uh, Debian Linux installed on this and it worked surprisingly well. There was a couple of issues, however. Namely, it sounds like it's trying to take off. The fans ramp up and ramp down over and over and over. And if we check the logs, there seems to be an issue with the thermal detection. It keeps thinking that it's overheating, ramps up, and then it's fine again. So it comes down and it goes in a cycle. Uh, the other issue with it is the disk drive is not working. Um, so today I want to try and correct both of those issues and kind of complete this project to have a fully working G5 PowerPC iMac using a modern Debian install. So I believe I can actually fix both issues with another iMac that I happen to have. So I also got this Intel iMac uh, as part of the same bundle, if you like, both iMacs for £20 at a car boot. And looking online, I think I can use some of the components from this one to fix my G5. This one does not boot at all. It doesn't power on. Uh, and frankly, it's far less interesting to me because it's just an old Intel Mac. It's eh, got plenty of those. Uh, this, however, can be hopefully the solution to fixing my G5. Someone in the comments of my last video pointed out that the reason why the fans are spinning up could well be because when I replaced the hard drive in that, there was no thermal sensor on that hard drive. And in fact, the thermal sensor had been completely removed presumably when the last person removed the hard drive. These Macs have a little sensor that kind of sticks onto the hard drive, and that is required. If you don't have that plugged in, well, you quite possibly get what's going on with this Mac. So we're going to try and salvage the thermal sensor from the Intel Mac, because looking online, they look like they are identical, or at least compatible. So we're going to try that. We're also going to try and take the CD drive from that Intel Mac and put it in the G5 because again, looking online, they seem to be identical in shape and connection. Don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a go. And if it does work, we have one fully working G5 iMac that cost me 20 pounds. Now I'm not gonna show taking apart the Intel iMac because frankly, it's, it's a real pain to do. Uh, if you've ever tried to do these sorts of things, basically when they switched over to Intel, they Apple at that point decided, you know what, consumers, screw you, we're not letting you repair anything anymore. So you have to do quite a lot of taking apart, possibly irreversible damage to get in there, and I don't really need to film me swearing for half an hour. So I'm going to get the bits that I need out of that Mac, and then we're going to give this a go. Some time later. Okay. So, Intel iMac taken apart, and I've managed to get out the hard drive from that Mac. It's actually a 160 gigabyte um, hard drive. Interestingly enough, it has the SATA connection and then the old Molex as well. This wasn't used, but I'm interested if anyone knows why it has both connections on it. That's very interesting to me. Um, and I will get this plugged into something at some point um, and wipe it and keep it about could be useful. It is specifically an Apple hard drive, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but more to the point, it had its thermal sensor still intact. So this, I believe, is what we need to stick into our G5 Mac, and uh, hopefully that will fix the thermal issues. So there's that. And then the other thing I managed to get out is the disk drive. Again, it's this kind of very slim slot loading has the same connection on it as our G5, so I'm really hoping this will work. It also has a thermal sensor, which I don't think our G5 one does, but I will save that just in case. Maybe that needs to be connected as well. Um, so I got the cable out for that too. Uh, so we'll take a look and uh, let's see what we can get done. First things first, let's get this thermal sensor set up. Now the plug for it is actually just down here behind this shroud. So I think I'm just gonna take the shroud off and get in there like that. I think that's just gonna save my sanity. 
with the shroud out of the way, you can kind of see it down here. This is the port. It's labeled HD temperature. And there was just nothing there when I opened this up before because there was no hard drive. So presumably they took the hard drive out. This would have been like stuck. It has a bit of stickiness to the back of it. And that's kind of gone away now. But um, it would have been stuck to the hard drive. So when they pulled it out, it would have come away with it. That's for sure. We're going to just plug this in here and there we go and then we'll kind of just i think smush it down into this section there's a bit of space for the cable this can kind of sit up against the hard drive so at least it's getting kind of the right thermals and let's get this case back on and that should be it that should be that bit fixed okay so now moving over to the disk drive this is the disk drive that we have from the intel mac and uh, that's the model number there and everything else, the connection on the bottom, and then the thermal sensor, which is just kind of stuck on, so I can get that off if needs be. Let's get this out now. <laughs> Funnily enough, this is being held in literally just by one screw down here. It's got some missing screws. Someone was definitely in here before me, perhaps trying to fix it. That's very possible, but... Um, yeah, there is one screw holding this in place, which isn't great. I might try and get hold of some extra screw screws to kind of fix that. But then with that screw out, the whole thing literally just lifts up and out. So I need to get this little daughter board off um, and then I need to get it out of the actual case itself. So there's some screws around the edges that I need to get off and there we go this is the drive that we've just pulled out so it's pretty gunky in there so i might actually be able to clean this up and get this working but uh, we will try replacing it with its counterpart funnily enough the sticker is on upside down different but otherwise they look very very similar so i'm hoping this is going to work there we go the new drive is back in it all fits, so let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, so we've got one win so far at least. It's booting up and it sounds much, much better. Hopefully you can hear, or rather not hear that, that yes. The thermal issue has been solved, so a massive thank you to that commenter on the last video who solved the issue for me. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's have a look at that CD drive. And we also have a working disk drive. Here, I grabbed the, literally the first thing I could reach that was a CD-ROM, which is this Sim 2 Glamorous Life stuff. But mounting the CD-ROM to media, and here is the contents of that disk. Awesome. This is so cool that this is working. We have a fully working setup now. So let's get some stuff installed and let's put this machine to the test, which is what I wanted to do with the first video. And here we go. We're a few days later now. I've done a fresh install of Debian 12. And for the most part, everything is now working. This drive is working, fans are working properly, we're not thermal throttling, everything's happy. The only little thing that I haven't been able to get yet is graphics acceleration. When we boot, we get an error saying that the Radeon drivers couldn't locate the BIOS ROM. So if anyone knows how to correct that, please do let me know. Um, looking online, I couldn't find a whole lot of information. We could try some different distros, see if there's different versions of the drivers that do work. But for today, for this video, from a hardware perspective, we are now fully working. It's just the software is a little bit uh, not quite there yet. It's just absolutely wild to me that we do have a fully functional version of Linux that's modern and you know it's using kernel 6.11 and it's running on 20 year old hardware. Okay, it's not the fastest. And yes, the fact that we haven't got any um, gr graphics card acceleration, that's definitely a problem. I still really don't quite know what's going on here. I really couldn't find anything online. The GPU is being kind of correctly identified. And if we have a look at uh, Radeon Top, it kind of is detecting things. 
it seems like some of the VRAM is being used, uh, but it's definitely not correctly loaded. So again, if anyone knows how to solve this, that would make my day because that would be that is the final thing going on here. In terms of other things, well, we do have, like I say, modern Linux running, XFCE running. It's slow, but you know, there's no graphics acceleration going on here. So it's actually not that bad. We do have quite a lot of things installed. For example, we do have Arctic Fox downloaded, which has been compiled for PowerPC 64 and gives us a very reasonable web browsing experience. <laughs> Again, considering the age of this, JavaScript is a bit wonky. But we can definitely surf the web. We could definitely look up things. So like uh, iMac G5. Um, and we can definitely hop over to modern internet. This is actually DuckDuckGo loading. OK, it's very slow. And also, the Wi-Fi is very, very slow in this device. I think it kind of maxes out at about 2 megabyte. Um, but modern internet is running here is the wikipedia page for the g5 it's functional uh you could actually you know access basic internet in the modern day it's it blowing my mind i have to admit i will say that actually during the filming of this video uh, action retro has released a video about his g5 imac that has the eyesight camera uh, which is the, technically the last one uh well worth a look at because what I found fascinating was that the teardown of that iMac G5, very, very similar to the Intel iMac that I just had to take apart to get the disk drive and thermal sensor out of. So it seems like they completely revamped the internals of this iMac for the eyesight upgrade. So to a consumer, literally all they changed is added a webcam, but internally it's completely different. Um, and actually, that does mean that this really is the last G the last iMac that they built that's actually consumer repairable. <laughs> I thought that maybe the eyesight one was the same as this, but it is not. So really is kind of cool. This is the last kind of all in one iMac that you can actually repair and repair easily. Um, so it's a shame, really, of course, but this is still very cool that we've got this working. Other things that are functional, so speakers are completely functional here. So if we... Okay, they blow out a bit if you go a bit too loud, but... At, six, at sensible audio levels. Fully working audio, which is great. Video playback kind of works. Again, because we haven't got that graphics acceleration and we are solely relying on the uh, the CPU here, it is a little choppy. So this is 480p video. But I mean, it works. It is just a bit choppy. And definitely, if you try to do anything else at the same time, that would be a bad experience. But I mean, it's functional. It's definitely functional, which is cool. Again, considering that is without graphics acceleration. Uh, yeah, I'm impressed by that. So yeah, there we have it. We have modern Linux running relatively well. Certainly, if you didn't actually want to use a graphics environment and you did just need the command line, this is perfect. You don't need the graphics card. Uh, I will maybe continue to try and find out what's wrong with that graphics card and it, any tips and tricks. Would love to hear it. Obviously, commenters on the last video fixed the fan issue for me. So more than welcome. And maybe we'll do a third part as well. Or maybe we'll have a look at some other distros. Let me know down below if you'd be interested in a video about that as well. So there we have it. Uh, still not quite the outcome I was hoping for. I would really love to have graphics acceleration working. But we're getting there piece by piece. And I think maybe I need to actually try installing macOS on this thing. And actually check that there's no hardware issues with the graphics card or chip. Because we haven't actually run macOS on this Mac. I got it without a hard drive and went straight to Linux. So haven't really done a proper hardware test. 
Maybe I need to do that. I don't know. Comment down below if you have any tips, any tricks, or if you would like to see another video in this ongoing saga of me trying to get a fully functioning, perfect G5 iMac. We're nearly there, though. But that is going to be it for today's video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And check out my Discord as well. It's uh, brand new. Uh, I think maybe there's <laughs> three people in there at the moment. So more the merrier. You're all welcome. And come and chat about old Max. I would love to hear your stories. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.